Let us consider a generator or a coil rotating between knockouts of force due to the rotation in clockwise. Due to the rotation in clockwise in the generator, according to Fleming's right hand rule, there is voltage induced and the current flowing in this manner. This is a generator. As it is rotating in clockwise, these are the directions according to Clemens right hand rule. Now, this is basically a current carrying conductor placed in a magnetic field, rotating in a magnetic field. So, this current carrying conductor will also experience force. If you want to know the direction of force of this particular conductor, then the thumb indicate, indicates force direction, four finger flux, middle finger current. This is the unknown now. You want force. So, north to south is the flux. How is the current direction? Is it going away from you? How is the middle finger? Like this. So, what you have to do now? So, now, flux direction same, current direction same. How is the, how is the force on this conductor? Downwards. On this conductor, the force is downwards. On this conductor, the force is upwards. What does this mean? What does this mean? In a generator, in a generator, in the armature conductors, there is a force. There is water action coming into picture. Force is nothing but water action, right? So, already, there is a prime mover which is rotating this generator in clockwise direction. So, let us say this is the prime mover rotating it. Now, in the generator, due to motor action, that opposite force, that mechanical opposition will be there on which part? On the prime mover. So, this prime mover, which is mechanically coupled, should be capable of rotating the generator against this opposition. If it overcomes this opposition, then only a mechanical to electrical energy conversion takes place. So energy cannot be created not destroyed. Like that some in those rules, energy conversion process happens through opposition, from mechanical to electrical, happening through opposition. You can expect opposition nothing but Lenz law. For every reaction there is equal and opposite reaction. This is nothing but motor action in a generator. Why we have discussed this means in order to discuss generator action in a motor. We are discussing about motors, right? Now, the motor operates based on this opposition again. Keep the heading. Generator action in a motor. there is a motor, not pull,
when a conductor comes once, what happens? EMF is induced. According to Faraday's law, in a generator armature, when it has set number of conductors, when phi is the amount of per force, all those things already we have there, and phi z and p by 60 into a. What is this? EMF induced in the armature when it is rotating in the between two poles. Now, this is motor rotating anticlockwise. These are motor conductors applied by a voltage wave. When these rotate, will they cut flux or not? These motor conductors, current carry conductors only, when they rotate at a speed, will they cut flux or not? If they cut flux, what is produced in them? EMF. EMF is induced as it was induced in case of generator armature. So in order to know the direction of EMF induced in the motor armature, which role you have to apply? In order to know the direction of induced EMF or current, which rule you have to apply? Right hand rule. So, how is this mood ready? Anticlockwise. Now what is the unknown thing? You want direction of EMF induced. Middle finger is unknown now. Yes or no? You want the direction of current or voltage induced. Middle finger is unknown. What are the two things known now? You know flux? You know direction of rotation. What is the direction of rotation? Anticlockwise. What is the flux rotation from north to south? So, if you, if you keep it like this, from north to south finger is okay, but the thumb is not indicating clockwise, right? So, what to do now? Now to invert like this, right? So, how is the four finger representing? North to south? North to south? And how is the thumb indicating? Anticlockwise, downwards, how is the middle finger? Is it going into or coming towards you? Coming towards. What is this? Going away. Coming towards. What does this reflect you? It is exactly opposite. It is exactly opposite. See, the EMF induced and the current are in this direction. Now, if you represent this, the middle finger is going uh, coming outwards means the voltage induced in the armature of the motor is exactly opposite to the supply voltage. Right now. Consider, consider motor running, motor running in its own anti-clockwise direction. Consider motor running in its own anti-clockwise direction. As the conductors, as the conductors cut the flux. EMF is induced. EMF is induced. Which is given by? Which is given by? Given right hand rule. Which is given by? Given right hand rule. By applying it, by applying it, the induced EMF is exactly opposite. The induced EMF is exactly opposite to the supply voltage. To the supply voltage. So let's lie satisfied here. The supply voltage. Therefore, it is called as. Therefore, it is called as back EMF. It is called as back EMF or counter EMF. Back 
EMF or counter EMF. What is basically EV means? It is the generator action in a motor. It is induced EMF only. It is induced EMF only. But this induced EMF, as it is opposing the supply voltage, it is called as back or counter EMF. If EG is 5Z NP by 16 today, EB is also same value, no change. Both are same, induced EMFs only. If you observe, in a generator, there is mechanical input. Inside, there is mechanical opposition. In a motor, what is the input? Electrical input. What is the opposition inside? Electrical opposition. Listen, the electromechanical energy conversion process is happening through opposition here. If there is no opposition, energy conversion will not be there. That's the basic law of nature. So if you observe in a generator, to the mechanical input, there is mechanical opposition. Observe carefully, if the prime mover is capable of rotating the generator against the mechanical opposition, then only generator action takes place. Yes or no? If the prime mover is capable of rotating the generator against opposition, it can overcome. If the prime mover input can overcome opposition, then only generator action takes place. Similar way, the electrical input you are applying, there is electrical opposition. So the input you are applying should, should overcome the opposition means P should be greater than EB. Can you say that? P should be greater than EP, then only you can call it as a motor. If you ask what is this machine, what you will say? You can't say it is motor or generator. It has identical construction. Same machine can be used as motor or generator. Any way you can use it. Right now. Electromechanical energy conversion. Electromechanical energy conversion. Occurs through. Occurs through. Opposition. Electromechanical energy conversion occurs through. Opposition. According to basic laws of nature, according to basic laws of nature, any energy conversion, any energy conversion from one form to the other, from one form to the other, occurs through opposition. Now, as you know, both generator and motor are identical construction. We can classify the basic types of DC motors as separately excited, Right now, generator and motor are having identical construction. Right now, generator and motor. 
are having identical construction. And the basic DC mode of classification is and the basic DC mode of classification is as follows. There is no compounding or degree of compounding or such things in motors. Compounding is to adjust the terminal voltage in a generator. In a motor, there is no terminal voltage. There is supply voltage. You are applying voltage across the motor. That is a constant voltage. You can vary the voltage with your hands to any value depending on the motor. So there is no adjustment there from the bottom side. So as you know, return generators, separately excited generators are rarely used in the same manner. Separately excited motors are also rarely used. Those are for special applications only, like for some motors. special applications. Why? Because as in the case of a generator, here also you require two DC voltage sources. For example, if this is the field winding of the motor, if this is the armature winding, This is a motor. If you apply voltage across the field winding using a separate DC source, current flows. When current flows in the field winding, what comes out? Flux. Next. If you apply voltage across the armature, this is supply voltage now, not terminal voltage. If you apply voltage across the armature, the armature draws current. This will draw a current. When current flows automatically, current carrying conductor placed in the magnetic field will experience a force automatically. It starts rotating. So the shaft, where it is connected, it will start rotating. And across the shaft, what you can do? You can load the motor. That is what happening actually. So this is I gave equal to IL. When you apply a voltage wave, let us say R A is the armature resistance. What is the voltage being used in the armature? P V. What is the direction of P V? It is exactly opposite to the supply voltage. So this is P V. If you write a voltage equation again, as V is the supply voltage, V is equal to EV plus IARA plus fresh contact drop. IA is equal to Here you read 
require two independent, two separate voltage sources. That's why this motor is not used normally. Rarely preferred motor for small applications, special applications, particularly servo applications. Automatic control. Servo means automatic control. But while discussing motor concepts, while solving some problems, you may require the separate excitation concepts. Means when the motor is separately excited, what happens? Or self-excited, what happens? Means the difference between shunt and separate link. Understand particularly in the voltage speed control method. Next, shunt motor. Why it is in some or control applications means you can control from both sides. You can control from armature side, you can control from field side, both sides like that. As the name implies, the field finding and the armature are in parallel. In a DC generator, shunt generator, you are told that the flux is approximately constant. But here I am telling the flux is strictly constant if the voltage is constant. That's all. The flux is strictly constant. There is a slight demagnetization, neglecting it. As the supply voltage is always a constant value, we always give a constant voltage across the motor. As we apply this, as we apply a constant voltage, automatically what is the current always? Constant value, so you can make it constant flux machine. As the supply voltage is maintained constant, As the supply voltage is maintained constant, for normal operating conditions, for normal operating conditions, it is a constant flux motor. It is a constant flux motor. Bracket neglecting armature reaction demagnetization. Neglecting armature reaction demagnetization. later, not now. Just have developing the circuit format. Series mode.
compound motor connected in long shunt mode. Long shunt mode means the field winding is connected across series field winding as well as armature. Long shunt. As I already told you, between long shunt and short shunt, there is no considerable difference between them. Their operations are same, identical. But if you reverse the field winding, then comes variation. For this mode of connection, if you say this is cumulative, cumulative long shunt, if you reverse the field winding, it becomes differential, then it has a lot of variation in that. And the generator case, IA is equal to IL plus ISH. It starts from here. The generator supplies current to the load. So IA is equal to ISH plus IL. Now, the motor draws current. So IL is equal to ISH plus What is ISH? What is the voltage across this point? V is the voltage across this point. V minus IL RST.
if you read portion number 4 from the workbook, in that portion it is not specified motor or generator, but it is just specified one thing, a DC machine draws current, then you have to take it as a motor. So we will start differentiating it like the first, first number one. delivers current. Of mechanical power 
of mechanical power developed in the armature. Now, what is D to L? What is the voltage across load? What is IL? Current flowing through load. What is V into IL? Power supplied to the load. What is power supplied to the load? Output. Output of the generator. V into IL is nothing but the ultimate output of the generator across the load. Right? Right now. V into IL. Electrical output. Electrical output or power delivered to load or power delivered to the load now listen once there is power generated easy to a in the armature this is not appearing across the load this is not appearing across the load. Generated power is not readily available for the load. What is the power readily available for the load? Only V I L. What is the difference? What is the difference between them? What is the difference between power generated inside, power delivered outside? It is nothing but total copper loss. I will make you to solve the problem. I will make you to check. Individually, I will make you to calculate water power loss. I will make you to calculate EG into IA. I will make you to calculate V into IL. I will make a difference. It will exactly same. Right. V into IL. Uh, now you write EG IA minus V into IL is total copper loss. Total copper loss. power generated, listen, power generated minus power delivered is total power loss. Now listen, what is V into L in water? Electrical input. V into L is electrical input. Yes or no? What is V into L across the motor? You are applying voltage across the motor. The motor is twice the current. So what is V to IL? Electrical input drawn by the motor. Right on. V into IL. Electrical input drawn or supplied. Electrical input drawn or supplied. Now, you know V into IL is some value. E V into IL is some value in the armature. Is all the input supplied is developed as power in the armature? Is input is equal to output? No, something is wasted, right? Now, V into IL minus E V into IA is again total copper loss. V into IL minus E V into IA is total copper loss. What is the loading across the generator? Electrical loading. You are applying mechanical across the shaft. What is the loading across the motor? Mechanical loading, you are applying electrical force across the terminals actually. After power stage diagram, you will understand what is the terminology. The force will, again I will repeat and finally I will make you to solve one problem on generator and a motor to understand clearly what is happening inside the numbers.
is not the significance of the back end? What would be the first significance of the back end? Energy conversion process requires some opposition in it. Without the opposition, energy conversion doesn't take place. So the back AMF forms the basic opposition in order to convert electrical into mechanical energy conversion. Right? So it is like a motor is basically. Without back AMF, you can't expect a DC motor. Without back AMF, there is no DC motor. So it requires, the energy conversion requires some opposition. The back AMF is forming the role of opposition in order to convert electrical into mechanical energy. So the first significance is right now, number one. It forms the role of opposition. It forms the role of opposition. For electromechanical energy conversion. For electromechanical energy conversion. You may be given any number of options. For example, the first equivalent you have to give to that only. First, it plays the form of opposition. So, what are the other significances means? Let us discuss now. Let us consider the basic voltage equation of motor V is equal to EB plus IA RA. Neglect touch contact drop means it is included in RA, including this. Now, you know in a motor, IA, in, in DC machines, IA is equal to IL. In DC machines, IA is approximately equal to IL. You know this already. Now, let us consider. Multiply. Multiply the entire equation with V into IA is equal to EB into IA plus IA square. If you observe this, it is like output. Input is equal to output plus losses. If you observe this, it is it is in the form of input. What is V into IL? Electrical input, IL is approximately equal to IA. So what is V into IA? Electrical input. What is EP into IA? Output. Output of a motor. What is IA square RA? Losses. Now, you know efficiency generally classic is given as output by generally efficiency is the ratio of the output of the machine to its input. So let us take like this. What is the output? EB into IA. What is the input? V into IA. EB into IA by V into IA, which is nothing but EB by V. What is the meaning of this? The efficiency of a motor is directly proportional to or significantly depends on back end of EB. For a constant supply voltage, you are applying always a constant supply voltage. The efficiency of the motor depends on its back EMF significantly, directly proportional. As more the back EMF, more the efficiency. And remember, back EMF can't increase the supply voltage. If you want to call it as a motor, EV should be always less than V, which means EV should be always less than V, but nearer to V. You understand now? EV should be less than V, what? Nearer to V. If it increases, it's a generator. Nothing but a generator. If EV increases than V, it starts giving current. If a, if a machine gives current, it's a generator. If a machine draws current, it is a motor. Right. Efficiency of the motor. Efficiency of the motor significantly depends on back EMF. Efficiency of the motor significantly depends on back EMF. In bracket, make a note like this. EB should be nearer to V. EB should be nearer to V. But not equal or greater than V. But not equal or greater than V. In order to have watering operation. In order to have watering operation. You 
understand why efficiency is directly proportional to UV in the next discussions. So this is the second one. So the third one is, let us say like this. This is the output. What is EP into again? What is EP into again? Mechanical power developed in the motor. I am representing like this PM. Mechanical power developed in the motor is V into IA minus IA square as A. If you are asked in a motor to get maximum mechanical power in a motor to get maximum mechanical power mathematically what we will do ppm by ia is load depending on the load only the output comes up ia is equal to zero if you do that if you do that what happens v minus 2 Ia, R A is equal to zero. From this, Ia, R A is equal to V by two. Ia, R A is equal to V by two means. In other way, how can you write that? Put the write that equation. Ia, R A is equal to V by two means. In other way, same same expression. Other way, how to write? Ep is equal to v by two. You write this. Ia R A is equal to v by two means the meaning is if Ia R A is equal to v by two means the meaning is. Eb is equal to V minus V by 2, which is nothing but Eb is equal to V by 2. If Eb is equal to V by 2, then only you will get IARA is equal to V by 2. Yes or no? In a motor. Now, what is the condition for maximum mechanical power developed in the motor? Tell me the condition. If you are telling IARA is equal to V by 2, it is true that Eb is equal to V by 2. That's why. What is the condition now? If the vacuum is exactly half of the supply voltage, then you will get maximum mechanical power developed in the motor. This is the question asked me last year. I use right on. If the back EMF, if the back EMF developed in the armature. Is exactly equal to half of the supply voltage. Is exactly equal to half of the supply voltage. Then the motor develops its maximum mechanical power. The motor develops maximum mechanical power. Change the color of the pen and hand it. Under such condition, its efficiency. Under such condition, its efficiency. How much? EBB by 2, BB. So it is 1 by 2, it is nothing but 50 percent. Under such condition, its efficiency is only 50 percent.
correct design or not? Is the technically correct design or not? No. Why? Because under that design condition, the water efficiency will be only 50%. You do something in such a way that you are applying some voltage V in the armature, there is only V by 2. You make some resistance across the armature such a way that V by 2 wasted there, V by 2 appearance drop there and V by 2 comes inside. So automatically you will get maximum mechanical power according to the condition. But definitely the efficiency is 50%. Remember, we are always concerned about efficiency of the operation. It is not that the output reduced, it is not that the efficiency reduced, it is not for that actually. It is that the loss gives temperature rise when the motors are operating. As there is 50% loss, energy cannot be created nor destroyed. You are giving 100% of input, in that you are getting 50% of output, and 50% of that is dissipated as heat in different parts of the machine. If this heat is proportional to the time, if you start the motor in the morning, 6 o'clock, as the time passes by, for afternoon, the motor will get damaged. In yes or no? In industries, motors are running continuously. If you want to know the importance of electrical motors, just type in Google, pencil manufacturing. Take simple pencil manufacturing, you will understand what the important role the motors are playing in our life. Start with pencil, simple pencil. You, you see how the manufacturing of pencil is done, how many motors they require, how many types of rotations, how much speeds, all the things you will understand clearly. What is the role of a motor to improve the standard of our life? Start with the pencil, you know. Now, when it comes to any motor, it may be DC motor, it may be induction motor, it may be synchronous motor, any motor, they will give you maximum power if you want, but you are not asking them. Yes or no? You, the DC motor gives you maximum power output, but will you design the motor for this condition? No. Induction motor will give you maximum power output at SM is equal to R2 by X2. Yes or no? Induction motor will give you maximum torque at SM is equal to R2 by X2. You have to increase the rotor resistance in such a way that the resistance is exactly equal to its reactance. If you do that, if you design that, it's not an issue. Simply raise the resistance of rotor, your induction motor will give you its maximum power. But are you getting it? Are you asking it? You are operating somewhere below that. Yes or no? Why? You want efficiency, not maximum power. If you take the torque slip characteristic, this is somewhere you are getting maximum torque. But where is the motor operation? This is the motor operation. You are not operating here. It is not that you can't operate here. If you operate here, you are getting maximum power. But what happens to the efficiency? Goes on decreasing. That's why this is the operating region. Go to synchronous motor. Synchronous motor will give you its maximum mechanical power at delta is equal to 90. Yes or no? It will give you maximum power at delta is equal to 90. But are you asking it? Are you taking it? No, you will not operate a synchronous machine at delta is equal to 90. It's operate near 30, near that value. Means you are not going for maximum power. You are concerned about maximum efficiency. Right now. Due to this, the motors are not designed. The motors are not designed to operate at maximum power developed condition. Not designed to operate at maximum power developed condition. But designed to give designed to give maximum efficiency maximum efficiency near rate at load condition near rate at load condition
Now, the important significance is that EMF make the motor self-regulating in nature. Back EMF makes the motor self-regulating in nature. By controlling the armature current, by controlling the armature current according to the load condition, according to the load condition, by controlling the armature current according to the load condition. <coughs> now listen, to understand this, let us consider there is a motor running on no load. As you know, the motor runs because of the torque produced in it. Whenever a current carrying conductor is placed in a magnetic field, it will experience force. Let us consider this is the motor armature. I am concerned about armature only. Let us, the field is there on the stator, field is already existing, don't worry about that. Let us, there is a constant field, flux in the machine. Now, these are the motor armature conductors. Why the motor is rotating? All these conductors are experiencing force or torque, so the motor is running. <laughs> if there is no load across this particular shaft, the current requirement, current requirement means in order to, you want to get, if you want to have a force means, or force of both are same, what you should have? Current you should have. So, when you apply voltage, when you apply voltage across these two terminals, the conductors will draw current, let us say. The conductors are drawing current. So when they draw current, when current flows, what is produced in them? Force is produced. If there is no load, what will be the requirement of force? Small just to overcome its rotational loss, its friction, its windage, when it runs, just to overcome its weight, let us say so like that, you require a small current. Let that small current be 1 ampere. Let us imagine, 1 ampere is making this 10 kg armature, let us say this armature weight is 10 kg armature, to rotate without any load, just 1 ampere is enough. And this is rotating at 1000 rpm. Imagine. Is the point clear? Take initial condition like this. Now, you are connecting a load across this. You can increase the load. You are increasing the load. First, no load, 1 ampere. No load, 1 ampere. When you take some load of 5 kgs, for example, 5 kgs, if the motor can't pull the load, it will stop. That's all. If the motor can't pull the load, it will stop. That's the end of the story. No need to discuss. I'm not discussing about that condition. The motor is capable of developing torque. The motor is capable of developing Talk. It is designed for any number of kg. It is designed. You are keeping the load for its rating. Let us assume this is designed for 20 kg load. It can drive simply. Now let us consider 5 kg load is kept. In order to, in order to make the rotation same manner for 5 kg load, is 1 ampere current such uh, enough? No, because it requires more force now. More force comes with more more torque or more force comes with current. So what it, will, what it have to do now? It has to draw current. Are you increasing the voltage? 
or increase the voltage across the wire? No. If you increase the voltage across the terminals, then automatically current will increase, but you are not doing so. How will the motor react to the change means by changing its vacuum actually? How is the motor self-regulating? How can it drive the torque? How can it drive the load or develop the torque means? First, whenever you keep some particular load, immediately speed will reduce. Immediately speed will reduce. Let us consider 1000 RPM is the speed, normal condition. When you keep some 5 kg load, the speed reduces, let us say, 1000 to 999, 998, 997, like that it will reduce. When the speed is reducing, you, you see a continuous manner, when the speed is reducing, what happens in the back end of the motor? Reduces. Why? Because you have written EG is nothing but EB is equal to pi Z N P by 60 into A. If you say EG is proportional to phi into N, same case. EB is also proportional to phi into N. Both are same. Now, flux is constant. Let us say, whenever M reduces, whenever M reduces, what happens to back EMF? Reduces. reduces. Back EMF reduces. Now, you know, A is equal to V minus EB by RA. From basic voltage equation of motor, V is equal to EB plus IRA for reference. IA is equal to V minus EB by RA. Now, RA is a constant value. Doesn't change. You will have a minimum value in the motor. Next. V is constant, constant value. Constant value. Now, IA is 1 ampere. When original condition, IA is 1 ampere. 1 ampere. So, some EB is there. At that time, some EB is there. Let us say, some value of EB is producing 1 ampere. Now, EB is reducing. EB is reducing. What happens to IA? Increases. What happens to IA? Remember, everything is proportional here. Proportional to 5 kg, speed is reduced. Proportional to 5 kg, speed is reduced. Proportional to the reduction, EB reduces. Proportional to EB reduction, IA increases, right? IA increases. Actually, when EB reduces to some value, the increase in IA is very high. Why? Because if you take if you take, for example, simple case like this, 220 volts is V, 210 is EB. 220 volts is V, 210 is EB. EB. If flux reduces by 5%, EB also reduces by 5% or not? Yes or no? Proportional. Yes. If flux reduces by 5%, EB reduces by 5%. Let us say, flux reduced by 5%. Right? EB, which is 210, if it reduces by 5%, how much? 42. Let us say it becomes around 200. 200. Previously, 220 is V, 210. Now, 200 is there. How much is difference is there? 10 volts. What is RDA value? 0.5. What is RA value? Very small value, 0.5 or 0.6 or maximum 1. What happens to IA increase? High. IA increases? High. So when IA increases proportionally, immediately torque increases. When IA increases, what will increase? Current carrying conductor will experience a force. If current is more, force is more, torque is more, force and torque both are same. So, what happens to the torque in the motor? Increase. Increase or not? When torque increases, why will the speed reduce? When torque increases, why will the speed reduce? The reduction in speed will stop at some value. The reduction in speed will stop at some value. And the motor runs in a steady state manner driving this 5 kg load, drawing that particular current. Do you understand this concept? 
First, it is running at 1000 RPM without any problem with 1 ampere current. Whenever you give some load, automatically the speed of the motor will reduce. Let us say the speed of the motor will it go on, it will not go on reduce like that. How much reduction will be there means until the torque gets developed in the motor, there will be a balance like this. What is the balance means if you, if you say there is a low torque, there will be electromagnetic torque produced in the armature. There will be electromagnetic torque produced in the armature. Always both should be balanced. If low torque is increased, automatically the armature speed will decrease. If the armature speed decreases, as the current increases, the electromagnetic torque will increase. So, the reduction in speed will stop at a point. What is that point means? At that point, the armature draws sufficient current to drive that particular load and runs at a new speed. So here what is happening means the reduction in EB is making the machine to draw current. Let us consider you have loaded 5 kg again, more, more load. You have loaded more kg again, what happens? The speed should decrease, speed should decrease. So if the speed start decreasing, what happens to EB? Decreases. What happens to IA? increases what happens to torque develops torque comes into picture previously if you put 10 kg electromagnetic torque is less than load torque yes or no previously the torque is produced only because of 5 kg now you increase to 10 kg load torque requirement is more than electromagnetic torque in the motor that's why it is decreasing so once it starts decreasing the speed once ev gets decreased immediately ia comes into picture and now what it will do increases electromagnetic torque. When the electromagnetic torque exactly equals the load torque, the decrease in the speed will stop and continue to run at that new speed again. Right up. If it equals to low torque, if it equals the load torque, the motor doesn't reduce its speed further. The motor doesn't reduce its speed further.
and continues to run at new speed. Continues to run at a new speed. Now, Mister, you have removed the loop. Now you have removed the loop. What happens? Speed should increase automatically. When speed increases, what happens to EV? What happens to AA? What happens to torque? What happens to rising speed? It will run at this. It won't simply rise like that. It wants to rise, but before it wants to rise, what is happening in the motor? The reduction in the torque is immediately coming into picture. If the torque is like, for example, let us say, let us say, in the motor now there is a torque of 10 newton meters due to 10 kg. There is a torque of 10 newton meters due to 10 kg load, perfectly running at some 990 rpm. 990 rpm. That is the condition now. If you remove the 10 kg load, what is the load torque requirement? Zero. What should be the torque requirement in the motor? It should become again not zero but one newton meter because to run against its own losses, rotational friction, all those things. So, when you remove, if the torque is like that only, for example, 10 newton meter is like that only, the motor will race away. Yes or no? Because there is no low torque requirement, there is a high torque produced, high force produced in the armature. What happens? Simply rise away. If there is more force on us, we will move like that. Same manner, if there is more torque, the speed will simply rise. But again, EV regulates the motor. It is regulating the motor not to reduce further. It is regulating the motor not to rise further under load and no load conditions. How? When you remove the load, definitely it wants to raise the speed. When it comes to racing condition, immediately EV will increase. Immediately IA will decrease. If EV increases, IA decreases. Automatically, what happens to torque? Decreases. And the balance comes into picture, normally running. I don't know. If the load is disconnected, if the load is disconnected, The armature speed increases. The armature speed increases to increase EV. To increase EV and reduce IA. And reduce IA. Consequently, the electromagnetic torque consequently the electromagnetic torque will reduce and the speed won't rise and the speed won't rise But the motor runs at no load speed. But the motor runs at its no load speed. But the motor runs at its no load speed. So now you have understood how the back limit is playing a vital role in the motor operation, right? In DC motor operation. Without back EMF, you can't expect a DC motor. Without slip, you can't imagine induction motor. Without delta, you can't imagine synchronous motor. These three are the vital operating conditions of these three motors. They will make the motor self-regulating in nature. Same manner. Slip should be as minimum as possible, but not zero. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Slip should be as 
minimum as possible but not zero same manner e b should be as near up to b but not b like that all the conditions goes in the same line keep the heading top turning or twisting movement of force about an axis of force about an axis which produce mechanical rotation which produce mechanical rotation expressed in newton meters you know fourth is in newtons actually so meters means the torque is basically defined as force at a distance force at a particular distance for example let us take motor case only we are interested in motor so let us take motor case you will be loading a motor across the shaft so let us say this is the shaft of the motor this is the shaft on the shaft there is a pulley let us say there is a pulley or a drum brake drum where you are loading i am thinking like this i have connected some load here this is the load so due to the load there is force here and this is radius so the torque developed in the motor armature is the force developed into the resistance the radius of that particular drum now when it comes to power simple power relation it is what done Why? Time. Why you are interested in power relation now means the power of a motor is nothing but its torque only. The power of a motor is nothing but its torque. If a motor is capable of developing torque, it will run. Otherwise, it will stop. Simple. So, the power of a motor should be expressed in terms of Torque. The two important parameters we are interested in a motor are its torque and its speed. The power of a motor is expressed in those two things now. Simply, work done. In, let us say this is rotation running at the n rpm or n by 60 rps. This is rotating. If this is the radius. if it makes one complete rotation what is the distance it has traveled distance traveled is 2 pi r what is the time taken for that distance traveled is 2 pi r what cycle what rotation what is the time taken for that time taken is 60 by n now work done is nothing but the distance traveled so when it comes to this work done per time it is 2 pi r into the force by 
60 by 10. What done is nothing but force into distance only. Remember, torque is force into distance, work done is force into distance, but there is a lot of difference between them. Even though there is force, if there is no distance, there is no work. Is the point clear? Even though there is force, if it doesn't move, there is no work done, but there is torque. Yes or no? But there is torque like that. So, work done distance into that. Uh, finally, what did you get? P is equal to 2 pi n f into r by which is 2 pi n p by So, this is the relation we want to take it from here. The power developed or the power is expressed in terms of torque and speed, 2 pi n t by 60. There is some drop and there is a V across the terminals. Similarly, when there is some torque developed in the armature, when there is some torque developed in the armature, when a current carrying conductor placed in the magnetic field, it explains a force. When that force is developed, that force is not exactly available across the load. Why? Because it is opposed by some factors. When you go on a bike, the air is opposing you some friction, like that. When the conductor move in the air gap, air will offer some windage loss. The bearings inside, the pressures on the commutator will offer frictional loss. And when the armature rotates, inside there are rotational losses, like iron losses comes under rotational losses. A current loss, stress loss. Why they come under rotational loss, we'll discuss later in the losses topic. So these rotational losses will immediately supply. It means while the torque is available across the load, it has to overcome all those things and finally it will supply them and the remaining, the lost torque will be there and the remaining will be across shaft as the shaft torque or useful torque. So now here comes two types of torque. One is armature torque, other one is shaft torque. What is the difference between the mains? Ta minus Tsh is equal to rotational losses. Make a note. When the torque is developed in the armature, when the torque is developed in the armature, It is not readily available across. It is not readily available across. The shaft for loading. Across the shaft for loading. Some part of it is lost. Some part of it is lost while supplying rotational losses. While supplying rotational losses.
overcoming. Supplying means while overcoming. When it is rotating, automatically it has to overcome that. So some part is reduced. Now, if TA is the armature top, TSH is the sharp torque available across the load or useful torque. TSH is also called as useful torque. Let us consider the basic power relation P is equal to EB into IA. What is this? Power developed in the armature. What is the torque developed in the armature? TA or TSH? Can you write like this? Yes. The power developed in the armature, can you write like this? Is equal to in place of EB phi Z N P phi 16 into A into IA. the motor is designed, you cannot vary the number of conductors, number of poles, number of parallel bars. This is also a number which is a constant. Therefore, the torque developed in the motor armature is directly proportional to its flux and its armature current. Now you link this with the force, basic force expression by Howard's law. F is equal to B I L newtons. It will be exactly the same. I A by A. Observe I A by A. What is the current in the conductor? I A by A. In a motor, the flux is constant. You can write like this. D2 by D1 is equal to I2 by I1. In a motor, the flux is proportional to I2. Series motor, flux is proportional to current flowing in that. So, this is for short motor. For series motor, it is T2 by T1 is equal to square. This is for series motor up to saturation. Up to saturation, you know, up to saturation flux is proportional to IA. As IA increases, this flows in the field winding, flux out of that increase. But after the value, even though IA increase, flux won't increase. Therefore, after saturation, It 
behave like a shanty motor. You know, phi is proportional to I A. So substitute in place of phi, I A. That's why I A squared. In series. In series, as flux is proportional to I A, and you know T is basically proportional to phi into I A. Here, flux is constant. So, T2 by T1, IA2 by IA1. Here, flux is proportional to IA. So, in place of flux, what you can keep? IA. So, IA square. But it is proportional only up to saturation. But after saturation, flux is constant. If flux is constant, the formula is only this one, IA. You have torque relations here. Now, speed relation is very simple. You know Eb is proportional to phi into n. So that n is proportional to Eb by phi. You know Eb is proportional to phi into n. From that, the speed of the motor, n is proportional to Eb by phi. From this, n2 by n1 is equal to Eb2 by Eb1 into phi 1 by phi 2. <laughs> These two are the basic relations in motors. Depending on the problem, depending on the condition, they will vary. Flux constant, current constant, speed constant, torque constant, like that. If torque is constant, T2 is equal to T1. Speed is constant, N2 is equal to M, like that. We will solve many problems in the workbook regarding these particular things. You will understand clearly where to apply these formulas, depending on the problem. So if the flux, you are given, flux is constant, then N2 by N1 is equal to E B two by E B one. What is E B two E B one V minus A R base? Okay. Okay. So this relation is flux is constant.
in order to know the suitability of application, you have to know the exact behavior of the motor in terms of characteristics. So as a customer, basically we are interested in a motor torque and its speed. So when it comes to torque of a motor, as the load is varied on a motor, is the motor capable of developing torque or not? That is what we require. Is the motor giving high torque? Is the motor giving low torque? Like that we have to know, is the motor developing torque or not? So torque versus load or IA characteristic. As the motor is loaded, what is happening to its speed? That is also very important. So speed versus load. And the last one is the mixed characteristic, speed versus torque. If you observe, torque is proportional to IA. Yes or no? Torque is proportional to IA. So in place of IA, if you keep torque, the second and third characteristics are same. Always second and third characteristic will be same because in place of IA, because as you know, torque proportional to IA will be the same same thing. These are the two basic characteristics we are interested in. There's a stop, there's a speed, what is happening with the load. So we'll start with shock motor. Again. You know, between touch and again, the relation is. <coughs> T proportional to 5 into a A. In a shunt motor, the flux is shunt flux, which is constant. As you apply the voltage V across the motor, ISH is equal to V by RSH. You know, in a shunt motor, ISH is equal to V by RSH. So resistance is always a constant value. Supply voltage is also constant. So ISH is constant at any load. So what will be the flux in the motor? Constant. If at all, if it varies, why it will vary? Due to which factor it may vary. When you load, armature reaction comes into picture. Due to armature reaction, there is a slight demagnetization due to which the flux may be reduced. That's the only factor. So let us consider in the first case, flux is approximately constant. Let us draw if the flux reduces, what happens later. As the flux is constant, T proportional to IA means between T and IA you have a linear relation. If you say this is armature torque, for example, if you are asked what is the shaft torque, it is less than that or greater than that? Less than that. Just below that you can call. No need to always plot this, just for your understanding of telling you. This is the shaft torque, just below TA. Let us consider there is a slight demagnetization due to armature reaction. As the load is increasing, what happens to torque? Decreases or increases? Decreases. T proportional to pi into I A. As we keep on loading the motor at the rated load, near rated load, there is armature reaction demagnetization. So what happens to flux? Slightly demagnetization is coming into picture. So you can mark like this, which will represent the torque reduction due to slight 
Demagnetization of our major reaction only. Generally, we don't consider. I am telling you, if you are particularly asked, this is the top characteristic with a slight demagnetization, very small value. versus IA. Flux is constant. First let us consider constant. So N is proportional to V minus IA RA. That's all. N is proportional to EB. What is EB? EB is V minus IA RA. Right? Remember one thing. Rk is lowest possible value, 0 0.5 to 1 and 1 R, 1 or not more than that. If Ia increases, 1, 2, 3, 4, so on. If Rk is 1 ohm, 1 ohm, just also, if you give 220, for example, you give 220, 220 minus 1, 220 minus 2, 220 minus 3, just if you plot a line, how it will be? Is it decreasing that drastically or slightly decreasing? Slightly decreasing, right? Let us consider on no load. There is no load on the motor. Motor is running at this particular speed. Reference I am plotting. Why I am plotting reference means to understand the characteristic clearly. This is the no load speed. No load speed and not, let it be. So motor speed is this one on no load. As you keep on loading the motor, its speed will reduce. Now if you consider armature reaction demagnetization, what happens? If you consider R major reaction demagnetization, what happens? Previously, flux is strictly constant, you have taken it's true. But with R major reaction, there is a slight demagnetization in the flux. So there, so there will be increase in the speed. Then, Is the armature of reaction maintaining the speed or not? Maintaining the speed or not? Actually, when you load the motor, its speed is decreasing, right? So the armature of reaction is reducing the torque capability in a motor but increasing its speed. Remember one thing here. If there is torque in the motor, there will be speed, yes or no? Why is the motor rotating? Because of the torque produced in it. If there is no torque, will the motor rotate? No. If there is more and more torque, what happens to speed? Increases. Speed is depending on torque, yes or no? Speed is simply proportional to torque. As the torque increases, speed should increase. Yes or no? Then, while you are doing the torque equation, when you equated EV into IA with P, EV into IA with phi ZNP with in that, 
in the torque expression, did you find any speed that speed has got cancelled? Right? Torque is independent of speed. Torque is independent of speed, but speed depends on torque. Yes or no? Torque is independent of speed, but the speed depends on torque. I think you would understand. There is a motor, motor is running because of torque produced. This torque can be any value. Depending on the torque, the speed of the motor will be there. But depending on the speed, the torque will not come actually. The speed depends on torque. Torque is independent parameter. Is it clear? No. In order to make you understand, what is R by O? If the flux reduces, if the flux reduces, torque is reducing. Torque is reducing. If the flux reduces, speed is increasing. So, don't think that as the torque is reduced, how is the speed is increasing? Is the question clear? As the torque is reduced, how is the speed increasing? Here, what is happening in the water means, the speed increases with torque only. How the torque increases, we will see now in this line. As the flux is reduced, it will reduce EV. As the flux is reduced, it will reduce EV. If EV reduces, it will increase IA. If IA increases, it will increase torque. It will increase speed. Is the point clear or not? If you reduce the flux, how the speed increases means the sequence is this. If you reduce the flux, EV will increase. If EV increases automatically, IA. If EV if EV decrease, IA increase. If IA increase, torque increase. Automatically, speed will increase. Is the point clear or not? You have to see always torque and speed in two different manners, particularly. For example, you may have torque, but you may not have speeds. You may have speed, you may not, you may not have torque like this. For example, let us take a Maruti car. For easy understanding, take a Maruti car. Car. A normal car if you take. Its speed is very, very high, right? Normally it's go at a very high speed. Cars will go at a very high speed. The speed will rise from zero to any speed simply. Take a tractor. Take a tractor. Its speed is a stable 50 or 60 km, is not more than that. Right? Car has high speeds, tractor has no high speeds. Tractor cannot run more than that. That's the value is that. If you now check the loading on them, the car may contain four or six persons maximum and it will run at any RPM. But the tractor will have a load very, very high. That's all no iron or bricks or sand, it will take and it will run in a stabilized way at 60 kmph. If you keep the same load to a car, it won't move. <laughs> so, there is torque, there is torque, there is no speed. Torque is the capability to pull the load, not just raising the speeds. Even though there is speed, there may not be torque to pull the load. Right? Approximately constant speed. 
but it has approximately constant speed. Between no load and rated load. Between no load and rated load. Therefore, it is also called as therefore it is also called as constant speed motor. It has good speed control. It has good speed control. In order to run the motor, in order to run the motor at any required speeds, at any required speeds, it has applications in, it has applications in manufacturing such as steel or aluminum rolling steel rollings so this is a manufacturing process sheets of rollings preparation steel or aluminum rolling machine tools Machine tools, lathes, centrifugal pumps, etc. Remember, shunt motor and an induction motor have same characteristics. Shunt motor and induction motor have same characteristics. If you see the top slip characteristic of an induction motor, a slip is equal to zero. This is the torque slip characteristic. This is torque. As you load the motor, as you load the motor, how is torque increasing? If this is loading, if you load, slip becomes like this. So as you load the motor, the torque is increasing linearly. As you load the motor, torque is increasing linearly. Both have same characteristics in industries. If you have an induction motor, that work can be done with the shunt motor. If you have a shunt motor, that work can be done with an induction motor. Which motor is best to employ now in industry? Induction motors. Shunt motors have all sorts of problems. They have to apply uh, operate on DC. They have pressures, they have commutation, they have armature reaction, all sorts of problems. It is costly or it has winding, it is not robust as induction motor. Many things are coming into picture. But still, if you are using a shunt motor means, it is due to speed control. But still, if you are using a shunt motor, if you are using a motor means because of its application, because of its suitability, even though both have same characteristics, both will do the same job. But still, if you are using a shunt motor, in spite of all the drawbacks, means the reason is only speed control.
Sven. Series photos. If you observe the dark relation, t proportional to i square. T proportional to i square means the dark varies as square of the armature current. So, when you start a shunt motor, what is the flux in it? When you start a shunt motor, in that, in that condition, in operating condition, what is the flux in it? constant value, what is the flux in a series motor? Less than shunt or more than shunt? Tell me. Less than shunt or more than shunt? In a series motor, the flux starts from the residual flux. Yes or no? When you start loading, for example, when you start from, we will be discussing why it should not be operated on no load later. Let us consider from no load or light load condition you are operating. What is the current flowing in the field winding, small current, like that it will go and it will reach its maximum. In shunt there is phi SH, in series there is phi SC. In the initial region, remember that. In the initial region, before some values, the torque of series motor is less than the torque of shunt motor. In the initial region, the torque of series motor is less than the torque of shunt motor. What is this? I guess square. Don't consider series motors have high starting torque. So what is this particular curve? This is not starting condition. When a motor starts, what is the current value means? The current is this one. Don't see starting means from zero. IA, when a motor starts, the current taken by the motor is 1.5 times IA. The current won't start from zero. Remember that. When you start a motor, the motor will take current 1.5 times a year, especially these are traction motors already started with some load. Any series motor will be started with some load. You can't start them on no load. And these motors, when they start with some load, definitely they will take at least 1.5 times rate and current. Means where is the starting current region? Tell me. Starting current region. Where is the starting current region? Here or here? A motor starts with 1.5 times armature current means rated means if this is rated, for example, 1.5 times somewhere here. This is rated region. Don't be in a misconcept like this. This is the starting torque. No, the motor is not starting from zero current. The motor is not starting from zero current. Motor starts with this. This is the operating region. In next operating region, a series motor has a high torque than shunt. What is starting torque? What is running torque? Why the starting torque requirement is high always? We generally say the starting torque of a traction or all these loads should be very, very high. Take a train now. Let us consider one train where the series motors are operating, traction motors. Train starting from rest, zero speed. Let us take like that. If a motor in a train engine wants to pull the train from rest position, it requires a torque. Now, 
some torque should be developed in the motor when the when the train starts from rest position. Let that torque be starting torque. Same train, it has been started. It is running at some speed. It is running. Load is same. Weight of the train is same. No change. But when it is running at its speed, what is the torque requirement in the motor? Is it same? Is it less? Is it greater? Why? Is load changing? Is the weight of the train changing? No. But why torque is less? Because of its inertia, it is running already. Right? Same train, same load. Starting torque requirement is higher than running torque. So, when a train starts from rest, what will be the current brought by the motor? Is it zero? Is it zero? Is it this value, minimum value? What is the current? This current. So what is the torque? High torque. The motor has high starting torque in its operating region than a shunt motor. But initial value has definitely less than shunt. Initial value. Why initial value? What is the current here in the series field winding? What is the current in the series field winding? Small value. This is, what is the 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, for example, 0. What is the flux? 0 IA. What is flux? 0, right? So here, small value, small value, like that. In this initial portion, the current flowing in the field winding is less, so less flux. As it goes on, it will rise automatically. This is the series motor characteristic. Next. When it comes to speed, see after saturation, it will follow like this. After saturation, it will go up because it is not I A square. It will be I A. This is up to saturation. Imagine series motor on no load. The applied greater voltage V, current is flowing, small current. On no load, what should be the current flow? High current or low current? Low current, no load. Actually, on no load, it should not draw any current. No load means what? No output. No load means what? No output. That's all no. Yes or no? No load means what? No output. Let us take like this. No load means what? Input, output. Right? Input, output. No load means what? No output. Yes or no? No output. If there is no output, why should there, why should be there input? If there is no output, for example, if you write input is equal to output plus loss. If there is no output, if there is input, means, what is the meaning of that? Loss. Yes or no? That's why you are taking it as a loss. The input drawn by the machine on no load is nothing but its loss. 
because input is lost, output is lost, there is no output, means input is lost. If there is no output, it will draw a small current to supply its losses. Let us consider the same thing, no output, no load. So, it will draw a small current to supply its loss. Fine. The current is not high value, no load. Then, what is flux value? Very low value, small value. Right? If flux is low, what happens to N? It is very, very high. Unusually high, actually. What is happening here means, flux is less. What is Eb? Eb? It should be less. Eb depends on what? Flux. Eb depends on what? Flux. See, if you see here, it is increasing, but what is happening inside physically I am explaining you. Terminalism. If you know, Eb proportion to pi into n, if flux C is less, definitely Eb should be less. If Eb is less, A not should be high. What is Eb? What is Ia naught? Ia naught is nothing but V minus Eb by Ra. Yes or no? No load, so I am representing Ia naught. Why I am specifying Ia naught means it is for sure less value only. It can't be greater at any cost. Because there is no load, it can't be more. Or no load, no machine draw, high current. It will not draw. What is happening here means in this motto, how it is reacting to the change means, observe carefully, when the flux is lowest value, automatically Eb is low. That Eb is low means, what is V minus Eb factor? High. What is Ia naught? It should be high. I am repeating again. I A naught is less means the meaning is E B is nearer to E B is nearer to V. I A naught is less means this factor, neglect R A, this factor should be less. V is constant supply voltage you are applying. So E B should be nearer to V or not? Yes or no? Yes. E B should be nearer to V. But what is flux in that case? What is flux in this case? Very less. Very less means what is Eb? Very less. But what should be the condition? Eb should be nearer to V. Eb proportional to phi n. If phi is less, n should be high. Yes or no? Absolute. That is what is happening in the machine. If Ia is a small value, flux is a small value. If flux is a small value, Eb is small value, but it should not. Why? Because if Eb is small value, the motor should draw huge current, no load, current drawn is less. How is the motor reacting to the change means Eb will be rated value only. The current is small means Eb should be High. Eb should be high means Eb depends on flux and the speed. If flux is very less, what should be speed now? Very high to maintain Eb to maintain Ia naught. That's what happening there. So, a series motor or no load speed is unusually very very high. So, you cannot start a series motor without any load across its shaft. At least 10 to 20 percent load should be connected across the series motor shaft in order to make it run with some load. If you connect some load automatically to, to run against this load, it will draw more current. It will draw current means what happens to flux? Increase. If there is flux automatically, the speed is normal like that. So remember, while drawing the characteristic, I will draw with a dotted line like this. Because what is this operation? No load. This operation is no load. 
never start a series motor on no load. So this is missing here. I will start like this. n is proportional to EV by 5. As IA increase, what happens to flux? Decrease. What happens to speed? Decrease. n proportional to V minus IA RA by 5. Remember, the numerator factor IA RA is also increasing. With load, IA RA is also increasing. V minus IA RA factor is decreasing but then the numerator decrease the denominator increase will dominate because flux is directly increasing with current here 220 minus 1 220 minus 2 220 minus 3 here 1 2 3 4 5 is directly increasing so the speed will decrease like this no load can't expect so we are not operating here there is no this shunt motor says there is a no load speed. But series motor characteristic is telling you there is no no load speed indefinite. But after saturation, flux becomes constant. That's why you have made it like this. After saturation, will 5s increase like that with IA? No, it will become constant. What is speed versus stop characteristic? Same. It will be like that only. Speed versus stop characteristic also represents same line. No change. Like that only it will be. start a series motor on no load. Never start a series motor on no load. As the speed becomes, as its speed becomes dangerously high, as its speed becomes dangerously high and damages mechanically and damages mechanically remember one thing also listen in waters sometimes the speed will rise by the drawing of high current sometimes speed will rise by the drawing of high current but here, speed is rising without drawing of high current. Yes or no? So the fuse won't operate. The fuse won't operate when the machine becomes dangerously high. So we will do something in a starter. I will explain you in a starter how to protect from this condition. Next point. It has highest it has highest starting torques. It has highest starting torques, which is exclusively used which is exclusively used for traction purposes. Traction means electric trains.
While in constructions, you might have, you might have observed a long crane like structure. In construction, you observe crane is normal, but hoist is a long crane like structure. So these are basically the loads which requires high inertia, high loads. These operations are different. So as the inertia, as the load weight goes on increasing, the starting torque requirement goes on increasing. What is the starting torque requirement for a fan? What is the starting torque requirement for a fan? Very less value. It will simply start more requirement of high starting torque. But what is the starting torque requirement of a train? Very high. For that you have to use series motor only because it has highest torques than any motor. But I don't. But it has. It has variable speeds. But it has variable speeds. <laughs> which can be adjusted with speed control. Which can be adjusted. Which can be adjusted with speed control. What is the best characteristic of series motor? Highest starting torque, right? What is the best characteristic of a short motor? Good speed. Good speed. Good speed regulation or good speed. No change in speed, right? What is the drawback of a short motor? Normal torque. Normal torque. It is not high torque. Normal torque. If you mix both, if you have both shunt field winding as well as series field winding, then what you will get? A better torque, better speed. Not superior like this one, not as good as this, but definitely a better one than these two. Can you say that? There are some loads in industries which require high torques at the same time they require intermittent load applications, intermittent load cycles, especially those are, these are also manufacturing only, called as shares and punches. For example, let us consider, you want to make a share or cut or a punch on an iron block, those type of cap, those type of applications. There is a piece here, the motor is working on that, it will do a punch or it will, it will cut it, the job is over, within 5 seconds or 10 seconds, it will take its own time, the job will move away, again another piece will come. It has to do something. Again it, it, it move away, again next comes. Automatic process. When the load is on the motor for 10 seconds, then it requires a high torque. When the load moves away, the motor is on, no load for 2 or 3 seconds. Again when the load comes, it is with high torque application. Again the load moves away, no load. For high torque, if you use series motor on no load, it will race away. You can't operate. For example, as a shunt motor has good speed, if you use a shunt motor, it has no that much of torque. Such applications require cumulative compound motor. Right on. So as you know, in a cumulative compound motor, there are two fluxes. 
when you write t proportional to pi into ia, pi sh plus pi se into ia. Previously, in a series motto, you have written ia square. Why? The entire flux is proportional to ia, but now you can't write ia square. That's all wrong. Because major portion is constant, small portion is increasing with load. So, it is not as constant as the shunt, it is not as nonlinear as it is, but definitely the torque is better than shunt, yes or no? Yes or no? In shunt, there is only shunt flux. But now with addition to shunt, there is one more flux coming with load. What happens to the torque of a motor, cumulative compound motor? It will be greater than shunt or less than shunt or same as shunt? It is greater than shunt, but less than series, yes or no? Less than series. So observe carefully, as the motor starts from no load, it is equal to shunt or not? On no load is the cumulative compound motor equivalent to shunt or not? Shunt only. It will start like this. But as it is loaded, what comes into picture? Series flux will come into picture. And it has a characteristic in between shunt and series. It is not as high as series. It is not less than shunt in between that. Speed characteristic. If you observe in a shunt motor, n proportional to EV by pi. So the flux is pi sh. Since the flux is constant in a shunt motor, n decrease is slight here. When it comes to cumulative compound, some portion is constant, no doubt. But Y S C will decrease. Y S C will increase. E B V minus I A R A. I A increase, drop will also decrease. But the decrease is very small value. This increase will dominate. But finally, you won't get as good as shunt characteristic definitely because previously all the part is strictly constant. Here some part is increasing. So. When some part in the denominator increase, automatically the speed will decrease, but not as series. Why? Because in series generator, the entire denominator is increasing. Compare in series generator, n is proportional to e v by phi s e. The, here there is only phi s e. For example, if you consider one Weber flux, one Weber flux. 
one vapor is constant here 0.8 plus 0 0.2 0 0.2 is increasing here one vapor is increasing can we say like that all the flux is increasing take like that then as the entire thing increases this will more reduce as a small thing increase this will reduction will be less than series so where will be the characteristic now It has a definite no load speed. It has a definite no load speed, even though. Even though there is series flux, even though there is series flux, the shunt flux will the shunt flux will maintain the speed on no load. And the series flux will increase. And the series flux will increase. It stopped. It stopped with load. Series flux will increase. It stopped with load. Exclusively used in high torque intermittent loads. exclusively used in high torque intermittent load applications high torque intermittent load applications like shares and punches shares and punches or compressors etc
If I just see increase, what happens to net flux? Decrease. If the flux decreases, what happens to speed? Increase. What is the no load speed? What is the no load speed? equivalent to shunt. On no load, differential motor is nothing but a shunt motor. So, it will have a no load speed or not. Same like a shunt, it will be here. But as you start loading, it will increase. the same thing for speed versus torque also, no change, it is a similar thing.
as you load the motor, the motor should develop the torque. Otherwise, what happens? As you load the motor, the motor should develop torque. Otherwise, what happens? Stop. Stop. See here. As you load the motor, is it developing torque or reducing torque? Developing torque or reducing torque? It is not. It is, the capability of developing torque is getting reduced. That's all. So, will the load get satisfied if the load increases, torque gets reduced? No. That's why it has no applications. This motor has no practical applications. But it has applications in exams. That's why you have to write some points here. In differential case, in differential case, as the load increases, net flux reduces. In turn, reduce the torque. In turn, reduce the torque. It also has instable speed. It also has instable speeds. For example, let us consider when you start a motor, it is drawing a huge current. Let us imagine like this. Motor is started. When it is started, you know, the start only, when you start, let us consider, it is drawing huge current. You know, always, this is phi s h, this is phi s c, minus. During starting of a motor, the motor always starts with normal, normal zero speed, EV is less, it will drop huge current generally. We will discuss at the start of the topic what happens here. When it is started, when it is drawing huge current from the supply during starting condition until it reaches rated speed, when high current flows in the series to speed winding, what happens to series flux? Increase. For SH minus for SE, now you will get a chance of having negative here. You have written always phi s h dominates phi s c. But here there is a peculiar case that is when you start a motor there is a chance of current flowing into the field winding from huge value. When a DC motor is started it will draw huge current basically. With starter you have to start and starter is adjusted in such a way that it will regulate the current. For example if you start a motor when it draws a huge current, that huge current will increase the series flux. When series flux dominates the shunt flux, what happened to the net flux polarity, direction, what happened? Minus. If flux becomes minus, what happens to torque? 
So there is a chance of reverse rotation. Yes or no? There is a chance of opposite rotation. Will they will they this chance exist in any motor? In any motor, shunt motor, take shunt motor. If you watch current flows through the machine, will there be any, any reverse of speed? No, no minus value. Take series. If you watch current flows, will there reverse law flux? No. In cumulative compound, if you watch current comes into picture, will there be reverse law flux? No. But if you watch current comes into picture, in this particular case, there is a chance of phi sc gaining upper hand over phi sh. So what happens to net flux now? Minus. What happens to torque? Minus. What happens to speed? Minus. So this motor has a chance of rotating in the reverse direction automatically during starting. Only this motor. If you are asked specifically, right? Question number 26. Part two. Right now. Right now in the nose. Right now. Continue. It may run in the reverse direction. It may run in the reverse direction. When the motor draws huge current, when the motor draws large current, it has no practical applications. It has no practical applications. Keep the heading speed regulation. Speed regulation. What is voltage regulation? Similar way to define a speed regulation is the change in the speed when the motor is removed its load from rated value to low load value. Express that speed at rated speed. Right. Speed regulation. It is the change. It is the change in speed when the load on the motor, when the load on the motor is removed in bracket from rated to no load condition from rated to no load condition expressed in percentage of expressed in percentage of speed at rated load If you say N naught is the no load speed, if you say N is the speed at rated load by N into <laughs> Let us consider like this. This is the rated load condition. This rated load, if you plot a line, At rated load, no load, these are the speeds. This is indifferent. That's a different thing. These are the speeds. At rated, this is the speed. B, this is the speed. This is the speed. If you observe, which motor has best speed regulation? 
shuns him at all. The difference in the speed from no load to rated load is very small value. It should be small. The speed of the motor should not vary with the load. It should be as low as possible. But shunt motor has less the speed regulation. Shunt motor has best speed regulation. One more point, listen once. Listen. We have some speed control methods. In th using those speed control methods, you can increase the speed of the motor, decrease the speed of the motor. For example, if you start a motor on low load, when you run the motor at rated load, its speed has been reduced. This is no load speed should be 1000 RPM. Its speed has been reduced to 990, let us say. This 990, if you want to determine the speed regulation, what you will say? 1000 minus 990 by 990, you will keep and you will calculate. That is different. If you use a speed control method, and you can bring this 990 to 1000. That is not zero speed control. It is naturally there is a speed regulation. Naturally there is a speed regulation in a motor. And for your application, what you can do? You can manipulate 990 into 1000. Naturally cumulative motor has a speed regulation value high. It is running at this speed. By using some speed control, what you can do? Adjust the speed from this point to this point. You can, you can vary higher or lower, anything, right? This is also having naturally low value. You can adjust this. By adjusting something, you can do like this, right? Now, if you are asked, without any control, which motor may have zero speed regulation? Without any speed control, this is the question asked. Without any speed control, which motor may have, this is not a rule, which motor can have, is there any possibility in any of these four motors to have zero speed regulation? Means, what is meant by zero speed regulation? As you are loading the motor, the speed should not decrease, it should be same value. Same value means, if you design a differential motor, Something like this in, in such a way that if this cup, no motor can have that, right? All the motors are going down. All the motors are going down. Only in a series motor it is going up. What is the speed regulation value for this? Always negative. Always negative. So in this motor only you may have, if you want to do something without any control, for example, initially if this curve, if this curve, initially if it starts like this, is it increased like this or not? It will increase like this or not? So at some load definitely, as with the load, as the speed reduces, with the load, as the speed increases, if you are asked a question, in which motor you can have zero speed regulation without any control, you should keep only differential motor. Differential motors have negative speed regulation. Differential motors have negative speed regulation. Without any external control, without any external control, They may have zero speed regulation. They may have zero speed regulation. See, means don't, no need of any external control. You design the motor in such a way that as the flux is decreasing, speed is increasing. So you design the curve originally, the curve will go like this. Then automatically it will be somewhere no load speed equal to full load speed like that. So if you are asked the question in this manner, in out of these four, which may have zero speed regulation without any control, with the control all motors can have, with the control all motors can have 
zero regulation, yes or no? With control, you can do all the motors. No load speed is something. Full load speed is something. Using some control, what you can do? This speed you can bring up to no load speed. With control, you can do zero speed regulation for any motor. Without any control, if you want to get only the possibility in only worst case, that is differential. If you ask like that.